Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I, I would have a lot of things to say about the, the last uh, conversation, but it doesn't matter. So, uh, <coughs> the, I, I, I want to, to say something about what we call new mobility services and uh, shared mobility in a city like, like Paris. Uh, as you know, Paris has been a, a, a pioneer for new mobility services, bike sharing since uh, two, 2007, electric car sharing, you can see it. Uh, since uh, 2011, we also worked with the taxi companies to provide a better and smarter service. For example, here with an application for hailing a taxi or also providing uh, hydrogen for Hype, a taxi company totally using uh, uh, hydrogen. And uh, the arrival of uh, shared mobility is fueling a public debate uh, to change our perception of uh, how mobility uh, is organized. I'm sorry. Oh, I have a problem. So we have new challenges with uh, digital mobility platforms. Uh, the, the private uh, hiring vehicles platforms as uh, Uber, uh, or more recently bicycle delivery platforms have been very successful uh, in cities like Paris, but very quickly they raise major issues about their impact on uh, workers, competition with a taxi driver first, then the working condition of uh, uh, Uber drivers and also uh, of delivery drivers, but another important debate that is emerging for uh, cities like Paris or New York or London is uh, uh, the use of public space. Uh, Vehicles like Uber are concentrated in the dense city center waiting for passengers uh, like uh, zombies. And of course, and you can see this on, on, the, on the pictures, the eruption of bicycles and scooters uh, in free floating services since last year uh, has generated other problems in the use of public space, discomfort for pedestrians and wheelchairs, vandalism and broken bikes. These issues highlight the necessary regulation of this mobility service in the heart of the, of the dense city. This regulation is also necessary to meet other challenges, guaranteeing user safety, ensuring digital inclusion, uh, or having sustainable machines in a circular economic uh, uh, approach. So uh, I give you the example of the uh, regulation of the TNC, uh, uh, like Uber in, uh, in France, a national law entered in force uh, a year ago. The main objective of this law is to define a national framework. Uh, in the future, law on mobility, uh, the, the, the logic of regulation of uh, TNCs remain national in Paris, in, uh, in France. Uh, and we want to deport the debate by creating digital infrastructures at a local level. And we want to share APIs to make them interoperable and define shared rules that allow them to be registered. We think we can give a very large place to on-demand transports to widen accessibility, but local regulation can ensure that the service is clean and shared, that it avoids door-to-door -door traffic at peak times. The local regulation can also limit competition with active modes and mass transport. The national level can help us to encourage operators to follow our, our policy. So the challenge is of mobility as a service. Uh, the, we are now convinced that the regulation of mobility service on demand, car sharing, or free floating will require mass technologies. The promise of the mass is to move from a proprietary vehicle that meets all travel needs to a mobility package that meets the diversity of possible needs to move. This is a promise shared by many players, from startups such as the Finnish WIM to many other digital companies, but also public transport operators, car manufacturers, and car rental companies, and of course, also mobility platforms such as Uber. So, private car, even in a metropolis like Paris, where public transport is highly developed, 
we present the vast majority of the cost of the transport system, and you can see it on these uh, uh, figures. And it's, uh, it's, it's very uh, important because the, the, the cost doesn't fit with the sharing part of the mobility uh, 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 taken by the uh, personal uh, vehicle. Uh, three quarters of total transport costs on the scale of Paris region, for example, but the private car is also a huge waste of resources. It remains parked 95% of the time, only one minute more if it's possible, <coughs> only 95% of the time, and uh, the purchase of the proprietary electric vehicle remains too slow to meet our greenhouse gas uh, reduction target. So the question is, how can the market uh, evolve? And I, I want to say that the role of a local government is to organize an open market for mobility as a service. We refuse to have a winner-take-it-all model. In some cities, for example, medium-sized cities in France, a public transport company can organize mass services. But we do not think that it's work in large metropolises like uh, Paris. We believe that we have a role to play in organizing the digital infrastructures that will enable the regulation of several mass platforms in the cities. This role must be conceived within the framework of a public-private people partnership, 4P. Uh, 4P. Uh, we need to share open standards, uh, but also APIs, open APIs. Uh, share the ambition of an open regulated market to achieve the, the shared mobility principle, share this ambition with public transport operators, but also with manufacturers by providing guarantees for the development of their activity. Thank you, and sorry for the time.